we have a vintage Shuko 5311 SB. The SB is the higher end version, if you will, with the lighting system. As you can see in the box, you have the illuminated headlights and the directionals. Also on the side of the box, you also have the SB logo. This is 100% complete and 100% original. Years ago, I did add some extra glue in the corners to reinforce the box in a couple of corners. And it apparently worked very well because as you can see, the box is still in very good shape. You have all of the original paperwork here. And as you can see, it's very old and brittle. And this particular one opens up twofold. And being the SB version, you also have the special electrical, which shows you the front and rear lighting, which is built into the car. And again, this is just an extra bonus showing you exactly what it is, how to do it. And you can also take it out if and when you ever do desire to do so. And it shows you the steering wheel hookup and the battery and also the transformer, which is optional. And this is the original directions, which again, open up multiple fold. And these are all 100% original. Nothing here is reproduction. As you can see, it's, it's brittle. So we'll put that aside. Now we'll concentrate on the vehicle and the content itself. As you can see, it's a beautiful two-tone blue. It has a light blue roof with dark blue finish. It has all of the original signs with pillars. And you notice these particular signs have the raised lettering on it instead of the sticker. Um, Shuko found out over time that the decals have a tendency to bleed through and they've eliminated that problem with this solution here. Now, let's pull out the car. You can see it's got the rear section in the back here, which is the bumper guard, but it also protects it against the batteries. This is why the battery case is not cracked because of the protection insert. First, let's look at the car. As you can see, the car is in excellent shape. There's no glazing, no dings, no dents, no rust, and obviously, and certainly no corrosion. And this particular model, as with most of them, has this little tailgate, which can open up, which allows you to put the auxiliary power in if and when you have the charrette trailer. However, this particular model, being the SB, does require three batteries, so that's sort of a fallacy. You can't use this particular car with a two-battery pack. Speaking of the battery pack, let's pull that on next. What I've done is I've modified this battery pack. This is the original battery pack, which takes traditionally a size D battery, but back in the old days, they didn't have standardized batteries. So the company Varta out of Germany made a special battery for this particular case. What I've done was, this is a temporary fix. Everything here can be removed and the battery case is 100% original and intact. You can see on the top of it, you have 0, 3V, and 4.5V. That means when you turn it to 3V, obviously it's two of the batteries, which is 3 volt. And when you turn it all the way to 4.5V, you get in full power of all three batteries. This works perfectly as it is. Yes, it is jury rigged, but again, they don't make batteries to fit this. So the battery case is a one of a kind, and it does work fine. You also have the original steering power cable here with the original holder, which is very unusual because these always break and disappear over time. And also you can see you have the bag with extra nuts, bolts, and screws. This is again, 100% original, it's never been used. And just so you know, I am the original owner of this vehicle. My father used to be a sales representative for Shuko out of New York City. This clip comes out. Now I'm gonna gingerly remove the steering wheel. I'm not trying to screw up any of the pillows here we go okay we're going to put the box aside now and concentrate on these four primary functions which is the steering cable the vehicle itself the steering wheel and the battery box that's the key and also i do want to point out that the steering cable here or the steering wheel if you will these have a tendency to warp out and distort and prevent the steering wheel from turning. 
This particular one, as you can see, the four bolts has been completely rebuilt by myself. I took it apart and made it so it worked. Now, if you're a purist and you don't like the fact that it's been altered, I do have one of these, which is warped, it doesn't turn, it doesn't work, which again, you'd be silly to want it, but I'll be glad to substitute this one for that one. So now let's put it all together and we'll see how it works. First, you screw this into the battery pack, the steering wheel, this is your power. And by the way, the steering cable also doubles as the power cord. The power cord goes through the bottom of the steering wheel here. And then the end of that plugs into the top of the vehicle. That's it for setup. So now we're going to put it down on the ground and run it around. But I will point out one thing. You have to see this on the inside. Zoom in there. Now, you notice when this lifts up and down. What this does is when this pulls out, it makes contact to make the vehicle run. If it's in this position, it will not run. The reason behind that is Shuko did this because they wanted the steering wheel to be taut. So the cable itself up here controls the, the car a little bit better. You can see the front wheels now. Back up a little bit. There you go. When you turn this, you see how the front wheels turn, and also the hood ornament turns. They did that for a reason. This is actually considered an educational tool and not a toy, believe it or not. Okay, we're going to put it down, fire it up, and see how she runs. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go right to the 4.5 volt. And... Face it to you first. You can see that the headlights work and that's reverse. And again, show, show uh, up here, please. You gotta pan out and do this whole thing. This needs to be taunt to keep pressure on the pin on the bottom on the top of the car. This way it allows you to move. If you don't, if it's loose, well, it's moving now, but it shouldn't have traditionally move. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a circle and forwards. You can see how now it stops. <laughs> That's because it's not torn. And you can see in the rear. Now we're going to back it up. Back it to you. Now we're going to go. Now you can see this also has rear directionals. I'm going to take the right turn so the right directional will be pointing. Now we're going to take the left turn and flip up a little bit. <laughs> I'm a bad driver. And there you have it, folks. You can see this is a setup. And that's it. Thank you for your time and for your considerations. Have a good day.